So I just found this poor little individual on the middle of the road. There was a car coming so I pulled it off the road but it was lying basically in the same position as this. It was just over there near that white marker. This is fresh from last night. Definitely not a devil. If it's a tiger quoll, that'd be interesting. Don't know that tiger quolls do this. Anybody got any evidence of tiger quolls disemboweling like this and leaving all that in the middle of the road? So another opportunistic feed in the same place where I found three other mutilated specimens. So yeah, our friend is around here and this is right near the spot where I filmed the uh, what I believe to be a juvenile thylacine with a thermal camera the other week. So yeah, interesting. Endangered eastern quoll, extinct on the mainland, presumed. And um, still doing okay out here. You still see a few of them when you drive around at night. But yeah, this one here is not looking too flash. So, Mr. Hemsworth, you really are wasting your money trying to clone an animal and own an animal that's not extinct. So, here's a quick explanation of the footage that you've all just looked at. Now, the place where I filmed this, I took a friend out there with me a couple of weeks ago as a scale reference. His kneecaps are 550 millimetres above this level of the soil. You can see the star in the picture there. You can see it's over the same clump of grass. I had a bit of trouble finding the exact spot, but I'm positive that that is the exact same lump of grass sticking up there or foliage. The animal is clearly quite tall, way too big to be a quoll. It has a long, stiff tail with the fat triangular base of the tail like a thylacine. This, I'm sorry, all you detractors, trolls and... Uh, non-believers out there is clearly not a quoll or a devil or a dog or a cat or a fox. This is at least 600 millimeters high at the hips, folks. This is a young adult 
thylacine. <laughs> Lord Brandis, thanks for your time. Yes, Brian, can I just pick you up on the salutation? That's not quite correct. I'm terribly sorry, Senator Brandis. Sorry, I say it from my own point of view partly. Brian, I've got to pace myself. Yeah, now I'm jumping the gun there. Mm. I wonder, Senator, if I could ask you about the changes you're making to the Racial Discrimination Act. Yes, Brian, you may. You're not just dog whistling here, are you? Oh, no, no, Brian, this is an extremely important area of law and one we said we would address when we got into office. But, Senator, you said this week that it's okay to be a bigot. Well, what I actually said, Brian, is that uh, if the right to make public statements exists, then the right to make bigoted statements exists. Clearly, by definition. What's that? Oh, John, could you get someone to close the gate, please? No, they're just trying to be friendly. Give them something to eat. Yes, Senator Brandis, to continue, just in terms of the statements you've made during the week... Can I say, uh, Brian, that this is a matter that's still in progress. We're still talking to people about the nature of this impending legislation. Okay, Senator, but why are you making these changes? Well, there's a lot of statute law, Brian, that bears particularly on exactly this issue, and Mm. there's also a great deal of jurisprudence. This is from the jurisprudence? No, Brian, this is from judges. Oh, this is what they say in their statements? Yes, Brian, in the judgments, including obiter dicta. I mean, whether it bears on the reason for the decision or not, Brian. And you want to control the judges? Raise ipsa locata, Brian. I would have thought so. Mm. You've mentioned many times this week that you want to reinstate the right of journalists to say things that are wrong. Well, what I've actually said, Brian, is that what we want to do is to protect the right of any citizen, any citizen at all, to Mm. make public statements. It obviously inheres in the nature of an open democracy, Brian, that this is a right available to everybody. Mm. This is a right available to every single citizen. And they don't have to be factually correct. Well, no, they don't. Statements don't need to be correct. I mean, you can't say to people, look, you better not go to work today, you might make a mistake. I mean, you better not say anything at all ever because you might be wrong. Sure. But what if you were trying to get the facts wrong, Senator? Why would you be trying to get the facts wrong, bro? Well, the facts might get in the way of an argument or the truth. Or well, whatever. in that case, the argument won't work, will well, it? Well, an argument doesn't need to work to be effective, you know that. Brian, how can you make an argument effective without making it make sense? I mean, can you think of an example of anybody ever doing that? Well, what if you said publicly that a particular group of people were throwing their children overboard into the sea? Here we go again. Oh, here we go. Don't give them something we'll, to eat. We'll have to wind this up. They just up. want I'm to sorry. feed. We might leave it there, Senator Brandis. Thanks for your time. Oh, lovely to see you, Brian, and mm. good evening. You're going to get some flack from this, aren't you? With any luck, yeah, Brian. It's going like a beauty so far.